Now look at this picture. What do you see in the picture? You see a house, some coconut trees, and a river. Now I urge you to look again deeply into the picture. As a typical house in the Mekong Delta, what do you see? The way I see it, I see some snow melt from the Tibetan plateau. I see some rain in Myanmar, rain in Laos, and I see 6,000 years of water flowing down, bringing materials, sand, and mud from five countries down to downstream to build the Mekong Delta for the past 6,000 years. The point I'm trying to make here is the delta was built by the Mekong River sediment transport process. Or in other words, without the Mekong River, the Mekong Delta wouldn't come into being. I also see in this picture the sweat and blood of my ancestors, our ancestors, for the past 300 years building this land. But this paradise may be lost. Now, I ask you a question. What if the delta disappear? Where are your future meals going to come from? Okay. Hi, I'm Tian, an ecologist. I was born a Delta boy. I'm here today to tell you a story of a, the disappearance of a big place, the third biggest Delta in the world. Let me tell you this, a story. Um, after the war ended in 1975, the whole nation went starving. So we needed food right away. So the Mekong Delta is the most fertile region of the country, had to play the role of providing food security for the whole nation. We needed food. So we produced rice, first by expanding rice cultivation, um, and we success. We had success. Successfully rescued the nation out of hunger. In 1989, we Vietnam began exporting rice and started to earn foreign currency and we thought it was great. So we continue um, planting more rice and we had more, no more room for expansion. So we went into intensification from one crop to two crops and three crops and that move was a tremendous success also because Vietnam today has become the second biggest rice exporter in the world. But we have overdone it. And there is a heavy price to pay because planting too much rice everywhere all year round, three crops a year, we have had to build a lot of infrastructure in the, in the blood plains to get rid of the flood water and we have to build infrastructure to separate the sea out from the, from the rivers to keep the, the saline water out. And in that way, we have altered our natural system and we have depleted um, the soil nutrients and we have depleted natural resources. And People are living, and intensive agriculture doesn't help farmers get out of poverty. And we have polluted our rivers and canals so much that the rivers and canals are no longer swimmable. So we have had to resort to using groundwater, resort to using water under our feet, and we are sinking. Imagine yourself living on a, on a watermelon and, and take the, the juice from the watermelon and what can happen? We are, we are sinking faster than three or four times and at some places it's ten times faster than, than sea level rise. Okay, and on top of second and third, on top of that, 
we have impacts from upstream. Upstream, we have, we have climate change from upstream, already making it complicated, and then hydropower. Upstream climate change, we have El Nino and La Nina. La Nina extreme La Nina cause very low rain and very low, low flows. And hydropower is adding another layer of complication. The list of impacts from hydropower is really, really long, but I don't have time today. I'm going to give you only three examples of the impacts from upstream hydropower, sediment deprivation, hydropower. In the past, annually, the Mekong River uh, brings down 160 million tons of sediment to build this delta. Today, because of the presence of the, of the downs, only half of that coming down. And studies agree that if all the plant dams get built, 96% of the sediment gonna get trapped in the reservoir, and only six, only 4% gonna pass down. And our rivers down here will become hungry, and houses will collapse, banks, river banks will collapse. And in fact, already uh, the delta is suffering from erosion. About half of our coast coastline is retreating. At, at some places, um, the coast is retreating at 50, 100 meters a year. And about 1,000 kilometers of riverbanks and coast are collapsing. And about 20,000 of houses need to be resettled. From, from erosion. 20,000 houses, meaning 100,000 people, were in need of resettlement. And second, impact on fishery. In the Delta, we have two kinds of fish, blackfish and whitefish. The blackfish are residential, they stay, but the whitefish need to swim upstream annually for breeding. But if you put dams across the rivers blocking the migration, migratory route, they cannot go upstream for breeding. So studies have agreed that um, if the mainstream dam is going to get built, 100%, 100%, let me repeat, 100% of the white fish is going to be wiped out. This is the map showing the erosion problems now. But in the future, it's going to be very serious. Our estimate is that if all the dams get built, the delta will disappear in about 200 years due to erosion alone, not, not counting other, other causes. So in conclusion, of the three groups of issues, climate change and sea level rise, internal development errors, and impact from upstream, what have been done? What can be solved? So climate change and sea level rise is happening for real. But it is a gradual process. And it gives us time and opportunity to adapt to. Internal development errors can be corrected with policy change. And in fact, the government of Vietnam is doing a good job in, in changing. Um, the policy setting new direction for development of the Delta with Resolution 120, with the Regional Integrated Planning, and recently last week with Resolution 13 of the, of the Politburo. But impacts from upstream, especially the deprivation of sediment, the very material that built the Delta going to be serious, going to be permanent and irreversible. And the delta might disappear in due course. We will have to rewrite our geography book for our children because the delta is gonna, not going to be there anymore. In ecology, there is a concept of K, 
carrying capacity, a, a, the capacity of a habitat to, to support a certain population of a species. Similarly, the Delta is supporting 18 million people, and in the future, it might lose its capacity to carry its people. So a lot of people will have to leave the Delta, or the Delta might not be there anymore. So we're all connected. Whether you are sitting here in Ho Chi Minh City, or in the Mekong Delta, you, you might be in Bangkok, Jakarta, or New York. What happened in the Mekong Delta is going to eventually affect us all, because in today's world, we are all connected. So the issues of the Mekong Delta present a non-traditional security issue. It has been proven in, in literature that environmental degradation and environmental degradation might cause economic, social, and political instabilities. So this is not only Vietnam's problem, but it's a regional problem, and it's worth the attention of the world. So what's the way out? The way out is that the Mekong countries should refrain from building new dams that accelerate the problem, and international cooperation should be promoted to address the current issues. And Alternative energies in the forms of solar and wind energy should be promoted to replace the uh, energy from hydropower that is causing uh, too much damage. Thank you for listening.